Who know where the S in BGP stands for? Security, yes, right. So uh, this talk uh, is about the S in BGP. Um, well, it's called RP Garden. And uh, I'm very interested in about this, in about, yeah, hello. The status of RPKI at the moment. So yes, uh, well, uh, at, the, at the moment uh, it's uh, well, it started to be implemented in a lot of uh, in a lot of our members. So a lot of our how we call them leers. So uh, they are starting to implement in their uh, in their own um, routers, and they are starting to create uh, their own uh, object that are called Rua. So actually, well, I introduce myself. My name is uh, Carlo Berto. I'm, co I'm coming from uh, uh, the company Ripe NCC. This is my first presentation, so I ask you to be slightly kind with me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I would start uh, giving a bit of uh, uh, background of what actually Ripe NCC does. We are one of actually uh, one of the five uh, regional internet registry. There are uh, uh, five local ones, and we actually um, manage IP and ASN allocation for uh, Europe, Middle East, and part of Central Asia. And actually, we distribute the allocation to our members. And we not, not only distribute them, but we also uh, document the ownership on our database, the RIPE database. So let's take an example of uh, two members, member A and member B. They actually become members of RIPE, and they, we allocate some IP addresses to them. And they want to exchange traffic between them. So they use a protocol that is called BGP protocol. And, uh, but actually, how does it work? Can actually member A trust member B that is the correct actually holder of that IP address and vice versa? Can member B trust member A? Well, I mean, if they are RIPE members, both of them, they can actually query the RIPE database. So they can go to the RIPE database, check who is the correct member for that IP address, and they can see, okay, yes, this is the correct member, we can actually uh, start to um, exchange traffic between us. But uh, let's talk about what BGP is. BGP is actually a protocol that it was born in 1994, and doesn't have any kind of built-in security in place. So anybody can announce any resource in the internet that it could lead actually to different problems. Well, one of them is how the router is set up. So the accident that can happen, there can be like uh, what we call them fat fingers because the digit one and digit two are really close between them and the router can be set up in a different way. Or actually a policy violation. So actually I announced something that I didn't want to announce on the internet or even worse, when there is a BGP hijack. So actually when the attack is malicious. So um, this one of the reason why RPK has been created, but actually uh, let's check on uh, statistics of how many incidents we, uh, we got in the last year in 2018. So as you can see, more than 12,000 incidents happened last year. More than 4.4 of AS number were affected about it. And more than 3,000 actually uh, network were victim, victim of at least one attacks of uh, BGP. So as I explained to you before, there is some database that can actually uh, document the ownership of uh, IP addresses. But uh, so there are two types of, uh, um, of uh, database. One is like the, uh, the RIR database, so the, uh, the database of the regional internet registry. Or there are actually, actually also private database. One of the most famous one is actually the routing asset database. And this database actually is, uh, uh, everybody can uh, create their own object into the database. So they can actually create whatever they want and uh, just paying them the annual fee. So I want to actually to show you in be uh, a comparison between the accuracy of the RIPE database and the BGP announcement that, as you can see, is quite uh, uh, green on what is our region. You would ask why actually uh, the whole world is, uh, uh, is shown here, even though the RIVE database only, um, is only for, the, the, for European, Central, Middle East, and Central Asia, is because for historical, uh, historical 
reason, everybody till 2018 could actually uh, create objects for out of uh, region um, resources. But as, as you can see, it's quite accurate for our area. If I'm going to show you actually the RADB database, this one is quite inaccurate because actually it doesn't reflect uh, what the BGP is, uh, is announcing. So what actually we did to prevent this? We created this, uh, actually we supported a standard, a standard that is called RPKI. RPKI stands for Resource Public Key Infrastructure. And it actually uh, ties IP addresses to ASN with some certificate. So uh, we as RIPE, together with the other uh, four RIRs, we are the trust anchors, so the certification authority that can authorize the certification to our members. And this, um, this RPKI uh, solution is actually uh, completely optional and the members can decide if they want to implement it in their network or not. So I want to show you a little, a little bit how actually it works. So uh, one of the important steps uh, of uh, RPKI is that it actually follows the same stop, st steps of the delegation of responsibility. So uh, RIPE gives the authority to the members to create their own certification in the old ROA. So a member can simply enter into the LAR portal, that is the portal that we provide to the members when they become a uh, member of RIPE NCC, and they can create their own object that is called ROA. Oh, sorry, that one was supposed to be ROA. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why it messed it up. Um, so uh, a ROA can, uh, can be created by the member where the resources are allocated. And I can create also multiple ROAs for different ASN number. There are three actually key elements that the ROA has. One of them is the prefix. So actually the range that uh, we want to announce. The origin ASN, so the ASN where the, um, the prefix needs to be announced. And the max length of the range. So these are the three key elements of our object called ROA. But uh, is it all? No, RPKI is not only this. RPKI has also another side because this one only states the intention of the members to announce their resources. What actually RPKI also has is a validator. So actually all the ROAs are collected in these validators and the internet service provider, they can actually implement them into their own routers. Um, these, uh, they can actually query the validation. So every time that they receive an announcement from uh, an AS number, they can actually uh, query the uh, query, um, the, all the, um, the data that they have. And we have three different actually um, answers. We have unknown, when actually a ROA has not been created at all for that uh, um, combination of uh, AS number and uh, IP address. It can be valid, so it means that it's created and is correct, or it can be invalid. If it's invalid, it means that there is a ROA for different elements, so they are going to drop actually that announcement. I want to show you some, uh, um, uh, some statistics of uh, uh, how many ROAs has been created in the last years. As you can see, especially in our region, the number of ROAs created had an exponential growth. This is because actually RIPE is uh, uh, promoting a lot RPKI to their members. And later I'm going to show you actually in, uh, in details, especially for uh, the countries nearby uh, Netherlands, and Netherlands included, uh, how many uh, ROAs has been created in our region. But I want to show you actually the, the RPKI um, coverage, so how many actually has been created, compared with the BGP. Uh, I, I'm not fully sure about it, I have to say. I'm not fully sure. I need to, I need to investigate on that and I can uh, give you an answer. So 
the coverage, as you can see, is still not implemented in a lot of uh, uh, countries. However, I mean, as you can see, in our region is extremely, uh, is, is quite green. Uh, and also LACNIC is doing uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, implementation of, uh, of um, RPKI in their, uh, in their region. The accuracy is quite evident. As you can see, we have almost everything is, is uh, green all over, uh, um, all over our regions. And uh, I want to show you actually on more details the countries that actually started to create a, a, a ROAS and the accuracy that they have on their, uh, um, on their uh, platform. So 74% in Netherlands, that is quite high. Uh, Belgium, even higher, 79. And the accuracy is, is likely to all of them, the 100%. So what actually can go wrong? We inquire some of the major um, ISP that uh, implemented uh, uh, the, um, the RPKI in their own uh, um, routers. And uh, we see that uh, AT&T, for example, is one of the major ones, say mostly nothing. Uh, Dutch medium ISP says five customers calls in six months or resolve quickly. Uh, some of them actually we just put uh, the uh, feedback that we received without uh, because they didn't give the permission to, to share their, um, their name of the company, but not all vendors have full RPKS support or, or bugs have been reported. And very large cloud provider says there are many invalids, but very little traffic is impacted. So actually, we can see that has a really big impact of our, our, on our members and on the networks itself. We created this uh, uh, email address in case you have any kind of query. There is a dedicated team. I'm one of the people that actually is part of it. And uh, my colleague, Ricardo, that is here, is also one of them. Uh, so if you have any particular question that I'm not going to be able to uh, reply today, uh, or if you have any question in the future, you can always, always use this email address. And we are more than happy to help you out. Do you have any question? What happens if an intermediate router does router uh, aggregation? So if you, if you happen to, to announce a, a slash eight made out of a zillion tw slash 24s, do you have to, you know, to query a complete database? Uh, Sorry, again, I didn't get your question. If, if, in it, if, you, if you do router aggregation, and you, so you have a lot of, lot of customers which, which, which announce 24s or slash 24s, yeah. and you aggregate them to a slash, well, slash eight or something, then how do you do? How do you verify this? Do you have to uh, query sixty-five thousand uh, uh, of these uh, of these certificates? Well, I mean, the the the, the validator actually is uh, they have a software that is implemented in the in the in the router itself. So actually, has all the uh, it's it's a faster uh, way of uh, acquiring the validator. And yes, I mean, depends of how the raw is created. If it's been created for uh, a lot of slash twenty four, yes, they're going to actually query the the data every time. Yes. So how many routers do actually in enforce our PKI? So if they see an invalid signature or uh, that they do actually uh, not accept the route? So uh, I mean, uh, how many of our members have implemented, no, no, you mean? So or how many routers or how many do actually say, do this our PKI check? Uh, well, I mean, at the moment, they're not too many, they are the, 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 the biggest one, the major one, are starting to implement it in their own networks. Uh, actually, in terms of number, I don't have a percentage of how many, how many ISP actually they, uh, they created in their own, uh, in their own routers. But uh, it's still a small amount, and they are increasing step by step, especially because they see that uh, actually RPKI is working. Uh, uh, so the, it's, it's, uh, it's something that is, is growing, but I don't have, uh, uh, at the moment, uh, a figure. Oh, and, and any, say, plans or efforts, or uh, what do you expect that will happen? Well, I mean, this is something that is not really uh, something that we can control uh, in RIPE. It's something that we can promote, but uh, is, uh, is, is something that the, the internet service provider, they need to implement in their own server. So it's, it, yeah, it's, it depends on, uh, on how they, they take seriously the, the word security for the internet. Is, is something that I, we, we cannot estimate.
No. Anything that we can do, say, as technical community, on to get well, this from the ground? Well, it is more actually for the for the members of uh, for the members and whoever is uh, is uh, is exchanging data. So I mean, if you are uh, if you are an LAR, uh, yes, I would advise you to to start to talk in your company to implement RPKI in your own uh, in your own company. But in in particular, this case, uh, yes, it, it only depends on uh, yes, it, it's only for people that are actually using IP addresses. Um, it's not open source, right? So, is it expensive for the members? No, it's not at all. It's actually it's for free. It's for free. It's a service that we give uh, together with the membership. So, as soon as they have uh, uh, IP resources, they, they, they can uh, create their own ROA free of charge. And yes, and also they, they can. Uh, create their own queries. They can uh, use the uh, uh, w what we gave to them as uh, um, like a certification that we gave them. But they have also a non-hosted uh, um, certification that can use. Uh, but okay, uh, the sun comes up for free. But uh, how do you pay your bills then? Uh, what is your business model? Well, it, know it's, it's, it's a membership. So, I mean, everybody has a, an, an, for for ripe. You mean? Yeah. Uh, well, RIPE uh, uh, allocate, uh, give allocation to their members and they pay a membership every year to have their allocation, uh, uh, their, uh, their IP addresses. So we charge for, we charge for uh, the, the, the membership fee, uh, annual membership fee. So RPKI is a part of the service that we give them. So like RIPE is, very, is doing very good uh, in, in here and the other and uh, the others not especially uh, the US it's, it doesn't have a green color and yes at the moment is uh, the, there are not so many why is that uh, well if I can talk about RIPE I, I can't really talk about uh, air in itself but uh, but it's uh, hmm? Uh, but it's just mainly because uh, I think we are promoting green much more than uh, than what the uh, U.S. does. Uh, one, two. Uh, do you have any actual examples of um, uh, like famous areas in the past where routing tables have been emptied and that spread across the internet? Have you got a, actual examples of that being prevented uh, by the implementation of uh, RIPE? Uh, of, uh, yeah, RPKI. RPKI, yeah. And, and if, if I have an example of uh, when it was actually... Yeah, or how, how many uh, illegitimate packets are dropped generally? Um, do, yes. Is it quite often or...? Uh, uh, yes, because I don't have the answer, but Ricardo has it, so... <laughs> I'm a colleague of him from the registration services of the RIPE NCC. Uh, well, there was uh, just to mention what happened recently. Uh, there was the um, Cloudflare slash Verizon, uh, sorry, the Cloudflare slash Verizon leak, in which basically um, I don't recall if a customer of Verizon or a customer of a customer of Verizon uh, leaked uh, a few more specific announcements, and um, due to a BGP optimizer, and. Uh, mm, what happened basically was that since we're, these were more specifics, the traffic naturally started to go in that direction. Um, one of the networks uh, affected was the Cloudflare one. So let's say where a huge part of the HTTP traffic and not only HTTP currently uh, goes through. Um, what was seen was that on networks um, performing RPKI validation, so doing all the thing with the scheme that was shown before, um, they ignored the fake announcements, and um, so the, their traffic was not affected. Uh, for networks that were not doing this kind of validation, the traffic went to the wrong direction on a saturated link, uh, and people had issues. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Um, okay. I'm talking about this because it's like the the first example that came out, but there have been a few. Um, but yeah, and uh, Cloudflare actually published a, a few posts showing, for example, in for the networks for which they were appearing in places where people do RPKI validation, then the traffic profile stayed uh, the same, normal. And for networks where they 
the, the operators do not perform RPKI validation, you could see the, the drop of traffic, like, uh, and then back again to the previous level after the... That was quite a, um, a, a large outage, uh, which, which happened. Has that not kicked the US provider into getting their act together, or do you know or what they're doing? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, there are um, a few uh, legal issues involved with, especially with um, using the, the data coming from Arin, because what basically all the four RIRs, so us, uh, um, Africa, um, Latin America, and Asia, um, put every, since we are providing service, we provide some terms and condition or a license attached to it, and um, what they, what we all say is like, okay, we provide you this data, you are free to do whatever you want. If you mess up, you did it and it's your problem. Um, what Arin is uh, doing, since it's uh, North America, so the lawyer land, um, to actually download <coughs> this kind of data, before downloading it, you have to explicitly accept this plus um, the fact that you, it's like, um, if you, if somebody uh, sues you, uh, you or Aaron, uh, you have to pay also for the damages to Aaron, or something like that. I don't recall the details, but it's a, a legal issue uh, associated to the possibility to use their data. Um, because of this, a lot of people in North America, so operators, um, are not doing RPK validation. Mm. On the other hand, uh, considering how um, all this validation works, uh, as long as a few big tier one operators, and there, are, there are a few that are already on the bandwagon, and uh, a few big uh, exchanges are performing IPK validation, this will automatically cover all the networks downstream. I would say that, yeah, would be, the best would be if everybody would do it, but as soon as a few of the big ones are on it, this would mm, yeah, save a lot of hassle for all the rest of the world, of the network. That's it. Interesting. Other question? Yeah, I understand you cannot comment on other regions, but even in the RIPE region, we saw huge differences per country on adoption. I believe in your slide, Denmark and Italy were around 10%. Can you comment, can you explain those differences uh, with other countries? What's happening there? Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's I think it's also like what uh, Ricardo was saying, like the, the major one on, uh, on other regions actually implemented it. So actually a lot of, uh, a lot of our members felt also a bit forced to, to start to implement it in their own, uh, in their own region, uh, the yes, what, for what it comes from uh, countries like uh, like Italy is still not uh, uh, something that uh, is uh, is so interested in uh, in the in the networks it, itself. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope we didn't bother you. Uh. No. Well, I have <laughs> Ricardo. That helps a lot. <laughs> Well, we share. Yeah, some <laughs> nice stroke waffles and the Unix history book. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Grazie. you. Thank you. Thank you, Val. <laughs>